everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and I am again in the headquarters of Sideshow. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amy. You guys have Sideshow Con going on this week. Yes. Uh, something I look forward to every year, new products that you guys are making and your partners have made are being shown off, in addition to what we're talking about today, this incredible art exhibition. What's it about? Yes, so this is our Human Cyborg Relations Art Exhibition. This is an incredible partnership with Lucasfilm and dozens and dozens of incredible artists. Uh, we have partnered with them to uh, have them create these incredible representations of C-3PO. We provided blank busts. And this was also a charity project, so in coordination with Lucasfilm, for each bust completed, we donated to an organization called FIRST, which is a nonprofit dedicated to introducing young learners to STEM, uh, robotics, you know, perfect combination there, and uh, really helping those underserved communities to increase that learning and maybe build a better future. I love these type of exhibitions. I know there are a lot of work, a long time in the making. We saw yes. glimpses of this preview last year at Star Wars Celebration, um, and but this is the first time I'm getting to see the whole range of these pieces. Tell me about some of the artists that you work with and, yeah. and their takes. And Yes, so you mentioned this is a long time in the making and we've had all these amazing pieces. Uh, we have so many different skill sets in the artist group. They range from sculpting to uh, costuming, acrylics, painting, all of this uh, incredible costuming work. And so we've had the privilege of working with artists like Hot Toys and other manufacturers like Regal Robot. We've even had people from the Mandalorian Season 3 costuming group do that, expert cosplayers, uh, and then just some artists that have worked with Sideshow both internally in the studios and then uh, through collaborations with distributed items as well. And the brief really was to take a one-to-one -one C-3PO bust here and just kind of do your take on it, right? Yes, Infuse it, was, it with their style. Yeah, transforming it however they saw fit with this canvas of a blank protocol droid. And we got some incredible multimedia presentations. As you can see here, Hot Toys physically took oh, apart my uh, C-3PO's face to introduce one of their six scale versions. So this is C-3PO as in, <laughs> as in looking and Hot Toys worked their magic with this piece. They've got all of the light up features and really a, just a deconstructed version of the droid revealing again some of their own artistry uh, with their six scale figure C-3PO. This is no small amount of work. I'm looking at this, I see not only are they of course infusing it with the six scale figure that they have yes. uh, as something that's the easiest part of it probably, <laughs> but this is all custom, all that detail inside I see dials, buttons, yeah. wiring. And the ways in which they deconstructed and, and really had it, uh, you know, that opening effect of, oh, of all wow. of the different panels on yeah. the piece. And even going so far as to take out pieces of the chest, carve into it, and then even add their own, again, details uh, for the internal construction of this piece. The little flight stands for, yeah. for robots that are welding and, and, and carving open this C-3PO, and then they still were able to infuse it with light as well, so. Yes, and then not to oh. forget that expert paint job on the exterior with all the, the, the patina wow. and the weathering. So this is a really storied droid, and they, yeah, they just did a phenomenal version of it. Oh my gosh, I, this, I imagine, is probably on the most, on one of the more ambitious ends. Yes. Um, and variety different styles. Uh, can you tell me some about, like, for example, uh, this is very interesting. Yes, so that is artist Freehand Prophet. This is J3PO, of course, in uh, reference to his love of sneakers. And you know, sometimes there's those pesky bots that prevent people from getting their own sneakers. So he created a protocol droid to assist people who love uh, collecting sneakers. But this is all 3D print uh, and custom designed leather elements. Uh, no shoes were harmed in the making of that, but that is his tribute to uh, sneaker collecting as well. Wow, truly mixed media, transforming the character. I see faux wood grain. Yes, and a lot of that on... was done in the paint job. Uh, this piece was dremeled into to create those kind of crevices. So this is Endor wow. artifact. Uh, again, just a, a beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, and there's people who did full on costuming for their uh, C-3PO's or constructed custom elements, uh, 3D printed or sculpted. So there's just a lot to show you with these. Well, I know the full exhibition is on Sideshow's website yes. and where you have details about all the artists, uh, but there are a few here that are from people we, we may know that I may know. So I want to check those out. Can we, can we take a look? Yeah, of course. Amy, this is from Tom Spina's team at Regal Robot. Yes, so we've had the privilege of distributing items by Regal Robot before, of course, those incredible uh, Star Wars recreations and prop replicas. But this is Sith 3PO, oh. a more dark side aligned protocol droid. Uh, and this, of course, is taking inspiration from Darth Maul's signature markings and transforming this C-3PO bust into a really unique, almost Zabrak style uh, droid. Wow, I, I love the way he infused the, the, the Darth Maul horns. 
yes. uh, with C3PO Greeblies. Oh, <laughs> such so, a good word. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. So, so cool. And going internally with the eyes, giving that signature Sith eyes style as well. And then a beautiful paint job that exposes some of the gold through the weathering, but has that really signature black and red wow. uh, tattooed look. Wow. And then a really nice patinaed base yes. as well. Oh, uh, can we take a look at this one down here? Yes. This one, this is cut and sew material. Yes. So this is No Man's Land. This was created by Esther Scandunas, who has been on Sideshow's uh, costuming cut and sew team. Many of the premium format figures and, and characters you've seen finely tailored. She has an extreme interest in historical costuming and really reflected that in this piece, which is inspired by uh, trench warfare in the early world wars. Wow, and, and you have sandbags in the front, whole trench, yes. actually, <laughs> in the base as well. Custom base, metals, are, are these custom metals? Or that is a great question. Unfortunately, I don't know, but uh, I believe that however she sourced them, it, it is in yeah. line with her uh, interest in the historical costuming. Wow. And then we've got you know a, a nice kind of subtle silvered uh, design to the bust, but then, yeah, we've got all those buttons, the stitching, and the design just completely encapsulating the uh, the shoulders and, and kind of traveling all around the bust there. Yeah, what's really impressive is the way the distressing is so tied together, not just in the, the tailoring and the costuming, but also on the face. It feels uh, error appropriate. I don't know how, because this is obviously a, a long time ago, a galaxy <laughs> a far, far away, but yeah, yeah, but it's still error appropriate. I think it's a yeah. very, very cool vibe on this. I love it. Yeah, and especially adding that trench to really complete the scene just adds a nice dim uh, dimension to this one. Wow. One piece I saw at Celebration, it was behind the Plexi, and it's so cool to see it not behind Plexi, is this yarn textured piece? What is that? Yes, yeah, so this is called the Common Thread by Ben Butcher, and you are correct, that is absolutely a, a yarn detail design laid in all of those you know spiral concurrent patterns. Uh, lots of fun cameos and characters hidden without, uh, and I love the, the R2-D2 in oh, his little heart. Yeah. Even on the sides of the arms, we've got the Rebel Alliance symbol on this side, and the design continues all the way throughout, but there is not a single piece of this that isn't covered by yarn, save for that uh, display base. But all of that is laid out so carefully to do those designs. Do the artists share some of the process with you guys as they're working through it in terms of how they're applying it, get advice, or like, I'm just so curious how, what, what went into making this? Yes, so a lot of these artists did submit progress steps to us throughout the process, and people may be able to see that on our social media as we highlight each of these pieces throughout the week. Um, but yes, this was just an individually laid, each section, the color changing, kind of utilizing each segment of the yarn and creating those designs like the Wookiee and uh, R2-D2 and even the little cameo of Luke Skywalker. Oh my gosh. And, and it goes all the way under the bust too. So I know we're at a, a, a lower angle here, but you can kind of see it wraps around yeah. the entire piece, all these laid elements of yarn. And I believe uh, just a nice strong glue, glue was used to hold those in place. Well, just like the you know, the statues and the full-size statues that you guys make when they go in collectors' homes are 360-degree pieces. Yes. Imagine the artists want to make sure their pieces, like when they're displayed at a convention, also are full 360. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And like a, a piece like this, there is detailing behind, behind there the There is an well. entire Ewok village behind there. Uh, oh. This is the end. You said it was pretty here by uh, Matt Black. And so, yes, there is a fully sculpted Ewok village. Uh, throughout that as well. <laughs> I, I take a step back and I look at, you know, it's cool to see one individual on an approach, but it really is when you're looking at, you know, four or five of them and you see the, the different materials, the different textures, the different color schemes that you some get a wide range. Some use yeah. black light reactive uh, paints and inks and we've got some multimedia elements. We've got, you know, some have sunglasses on or, or masks. We've got a wrestling costume. So it's just all of these different elements that come together to really create a, a wide range of protocol droids. <laughs> Can we take a look at some in the front lobby? Of course. Amy, this one seems like less of a paint job and more of a costuming job. Yes, so this was created by expert cosplayer Alicia Marie. A lot of people may be familiar in the community with her. And so she did create what is essentially a, a cosplay piece for her uh, C-3PO oh, wow. bust. This is known as Psy Threeps. Yes, this is constructed of EVA foam and various costuming materials. We've got all of these intricate little tubes running throughout, some clear elements as well. And she did submit uh, photographs of herself wearing the helmet oh, before it went onto so the bus. Still work on her as well, yes. even though it's fit, because it seems very perfectly fit for a C-3PO. Yes, yeah. this is beautiful costuming uh, designs. And you can even see uh, she's got some of those uh, like embossed elements in the uh, the foam construction and mm -hmm. lots of great textures going on throughout this as well. It's Just 
Yeah, great example <laughs> of the versatility, I think, of, of, of EVA foam, because you have things that look like fabric, but also yeah, like parts slicing. of it that have exactly the, the kind of like uh, mechanical or digital textures and the tubing and the hosing around the back. And really. it's very layered as well. Uh, yeah. You can definitely see the different uh, kind of ways she built out around this piece. And again, just an exceptional detail mm -hmm. for her side threes. <laughs> oh, and even though a relatively monotone paint job, depth is absolutely there. There's yes. so much in the airbrushing. I see around um, that, that she reveals all that layering. Yeah, and then she, you know, chose to paint the face a uh, dark color to kind of contrast with that as well. Wonderful, I love it. I love that these feel like horns. Also, yes. Um, speaking of horns, there's a fin on the C3 next to us and a little more vibrant. Tell me about this one. Yes, so this is C3 Protector. Uh, this is by Anthony Mestis, who is one of the project managers here oh, at Sideshow. Oh, yes, yes. And it combines painted elements with uh, custom printed 3D models. So you've got that really retro futuristic fin there, as well as these fun little uh, diodes on the side, a custom galactic protector outer rim badge, uh, and that very retro aesthetic paint job that has the nice uh, kind of scuffing as well, what you'd imagine from perhaps like a tin lunchbox or, yeah. or a refrigerator. <laughs> Anthony's such a great painter. I remember interviewing him years ago when he was head of paint yes. uh, here at Sideshow, and I, I love like the eyes that he replaced. Yes, for that. very oh. vibrant. Um, yeah, and he's a huge, huge fan of Star Wars, has painted several of our Star Wars pieces as well, and this is just a, a testament and a labor of love uh, to a piece of galactic history like that. <laughs> when a project like this comes up and you have so many talented artists who work here, whether in the paint department or project management or the cut and sew, they all, are they all chomping at the bit to participate? Yes, and we've had other art exhibitions besides the uh, human cyborg relations and, and a lot of Sideshow's artists have had a chance to participate, whether through Unruly Industries or the Atomic Misfit Dolls line, uh, but this was one of our latest projects and a lot of Sideshow artists, even some that uh, we might not feature here, but they will appear on our social media. Some of our other painters and costumers have uh, worked on those as well. Wow, wow, and then everyone, unique faces, unique naming schemes. I'm gonna tell you, the names are also <laughs> clever as well. Uh, I think everyone had a lot of fun imagining their own perfect version of a protocol droid and what better way to uh, show off their art, celebrate their fandom, and uh, you know benefit a charity that helps uh, young learners to hopefully express their creative sides as well with the, the scientific learning. Absolutely, a great project. And there's one more that I want to take a look at or show the viewers out there <laughs> that before we wrap up. I wonder what it could be. <laughs> So the final piece I want to share with you guys was surprise, a piece that we actually did and contributed to the art project. Model maker Kate Sabaker and I worked on this last year ahead of Star Wars Celebration where this made an appearance and we call this piece Protocol of the Wild. It taps into both Kate and my love for miniatures, messing around with scale and heavy weathering and distressing. So when Sideshow sent us the C-3PO bus, we took the head and wondered what it would be like if this head was the site of an archeological excavation, a dig site where it was massive. So trying to convey that scale, we built some terrain using some uh, pink insulation foam that we cut up and layered in. Uh, I 3D printed the scaffolding here um, in some small pieces. We then assembled it to kind of make it look like uh, maybe like an abandoned excavation site and then bought some uh, prefab trees and foliage uh, from like HO train scale models uh, to then dress all the way around it. And we had so much fun doing the build, kind of like workshopping ideas, then um, building this out, supporting the head, and then doing all the fine uh, painting and distressing and adding the flocking and adding things like the greenery in his eyes and places where nature would kind of reclaim this site. Um, and it's been out over a year since we worked on this project, and it's it's so fun to revisit this old friend now here as part of this exhibition. Oh, it was so much fun. So this piece, along with the other pieces from the Human Cyborg Relations Project, are all on Sideshow's website. I encourage you to check that out. They're in, linked in the description below, and it will have more from what they're revealing at SideshowCon later this week on Tested. Until then, I'll see you next time. Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here. If you've ever seen the six inch ruler in inches and centimeters on my forearm and wanted one of your own, but you didn't want it to be permanent, well, today's your lucky day. You can now buy temporary tattoos of my measuring stick.
my measuring forearm, uh, at tested-store.com. Comes like this, goes on in about 30 seconds with a little water. The instructions are on the back. It comes off with rubbing alcohol, and hopefully it warms you up to the idea of permanently attaching a measuring device to your body, because I use mine every single day.